second time or first time. Uh, my name is Shlomo, and uh, this is uh, we're in a Bet Midrash, virtual Bet Midrash called Shalhevet, uh, which is a project that the students of Upstein um sort of we dreamt it before, but it's actualized um, since the Rab passed away about five weeks ago. And um, the corona kind of brings everything back to Zoom or into. So, um, so this is our, our Bit Midrash. Um, I really want to invite everyone who's here participating. Um, it's a Bit Midrash. Bit Midrash is where we learn together. Um, it's not me teaching you. It's, I brought the materials and prepared, but I really would love to hear comments and thoughts. Um, this is recorded also for people who can't uh, participate now and could listen later. Um, and uh, yeah, and we'll start last week. Um, the, the, this is a three session uh, uh, shi'u, which started last week. We'll learn today and there's going to be another one next week, next Tuesday. And then um, if people are interesting, interested and everything works well. So after Sukkot, we'll start another course or session and we'll see what the topics will be. Uh, the topic of these three three sessions was kind of exploring the, I would say, the personality and works of Rav Steinsatz uh, through learning and studying some of what I think are um, core pieces of his work or very fundamental things that he spoke about and wrote. Uh, we learned last week the Hakdama of Pirkei Avot, um, where I'll just say the punchline that I, I was connected to. Um, we spoke about a, a tension between, um, between trying to create people who are very, um, I, I said, I call them elite, very like above the normal average, uh, people who are intellectual and at the same time very um, spiritual and very, uh, very um, ethical and, and, and very effective in the world. And at the same time, together with that, also being very connected to the no simple people, to the normal people, um, and sort of making a bridge between, um, I would say, what the Rav, what Rav Steinsatz is demanding from people, and also the reality where people are and sort of bridging, bridging between, right, the heavens and the earth, right, between what's, where we're striving to be and where reality is. And we saw that through Pirkei Avot, which we said that Pirkei Avot is, in an interesting way, it's such a fundamental book in Judaism, but at the same time, the expectations that Pirkei Avot have from a person were so beyond normal. And Rav Steinzat sort of leads us to this understanding that the more we demand from ourselves and the more we put ourselves in progress, then we are able to get to higher, higher places. Um, and today I want to take the same, that same tension and see it through um, a very extensive commentary of a, uh, a book called Tanya. I'm sure many of you have heard of the, the Tanya. Uh, uh, of the Lubavitcher, of uh, the first Lubavitcher Rabbi Rav Shnei Zalman and Liadi, um, and and Netanya became sort of they call it the written the Torah Shabichtav, the written Torah of of Chabad and maybe of Chasidut um, in a in a bigger way. And the reason for that is because it it was actually a book that was written systematically. Uh, most of the teachings in Chasidut were teachings that Rebbe's spoke and the students wrote, or things that commentaries or thoughts that were written in a very um, sort of unorganized way. And the Tanya was the first, uh, first work and one of the only works in Hasidut that was written in a really organized way. Um, and I want to explore that a little bit. Rav Steinsatz was a big fan of the Tanya, and I think 
Um, he's one of the only persons that I met in my life that actually personified the character that the Tanya is, is um, sort of drawing for us to be. Um, and we'll see that in a moment. So we'll start. Hi, Leslie. Didn't see it was you. Um, I had, Leslie's a friend from New Jersey. I had a Chavuta a couple of years ago in the Tanya with Leslie. So uh, you could help us out any understandings or... So, um, so let's just dive right in, okay? You guys up for it? I'm gonna share you. Um, Rav Steinzet starts his commentary in a traditional, Chabad traditional way, in a very interesting thing, to give a commentary on the title of the book. Usually, you know, this is, this is a, uh, this, this part, what, what I'm showing you here, this, uh, you see what I'm uh, showing is, is a, a photo of the first page of the Tanya traditionally how it's, it's, uh, it's uh, printed. And what's interesting is usually that's the page where you kind of look in for a second and then move in to read the, the actual book. But the Lubavitcher Rebbe said, and, and Lop Steinsatz took this very seriously, said the title of the Tanya actually needs to be learned on its own, the actual title of the book. Because if you see here, there's three lines that the Alter Rebbe of Chabad wrote on his own book, which introduced the book. And it's a very classic thing that Rav Steinsatz would do is actually write a 15-page commentary on three lines of the title of the book um, because it actually uh, contains in it uh, many of, of the points and what we're, which we're, we're, which the book is, is coming to teach us. So the title goes like this, Sefer Likutei Amarim, he named the book Likutei Amarim. Likut is sort of a gathering of sayings of Amarim. And I'm not, we're not going to read the whole commentary. We're just going to read the main parts that I wanted to say. But I'll, as we're reading, I'll say, Rav Steinzat said, this is a very interesting name to call a book. What do you call a, a book that you, that you write? A gathering of sayings, right? What do you think? What do you guys think that it comes to say when you say it's, a, it's just a, it's a gathering of sayings? Any thoughts of, of the name of a book like that? It's like an informal, uh, inform, informal, just a grouping of a bunch of sayings. Not really. Sound right, okay, formal. so you're saying it's, it's just a grouping, it's informal, right? As opposed to maybe titling the book. You know, many people like to put their names in the book, in the titles of the Hebrew books. So they would say, like, I don't know, call a, a book, I don't know, Zichron Menachem, because your name is Menachem, so you put it into the name of the book. Or Evan Shlomo, my name is Shlomo, right? So there's different ways people put their names in the titles. But over here, you're saying, you're saying it's just a gathering of sayings, right? And that's sort of coming to, do, to give us two things. The Alter Rabbi of Chabad wants to say, I'm not doing anything that's new. Right? I'm not, I'm not making anything up. I'm just gathering things and putting them together. So it's also an act of anava, right? I'm, it's humble. I'm not saying anything of my own. But it's also a little bit political because we know that Hasidut was uh, claimed to say things from themselves and to be, right, to make up things. So we hear that the Rebbe says, I didn't make up anything. You can't, you can't, uh, say that I, that I made this, this, uh, these concepts up. I'm just bringing you things that Chazal said in, in the Talmud, in the Midrash, right, in the, in the different books. And then he goes like this, Chalik Rishon, the first part, Hanikra b'shem Sefer Shel Beinonim, the book of Beinonim. Okay, I, know, I didn't find a good English translation for the word Beinonim. Anyone have a translation for the word Beinonim? Uh, usually they say inter, how do you say it? Intermediate? No, is that the word? Intermediate. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Intermediate. Um, I, I feel like it's not such a good, uh, once when I was teaching Tanya in English, I also asked Lopstein, that's how to translate a different Kabbalistic term called simtsum. 
So he told me it's better to teach the Americans Hebrew than to try to translate that Kabbalistic term. <laughs> but because uh, there's no good translation. So I feel a little bit here that Benonim, to say intermediate, it, it puts it something that's very negative, right? Someone who's intermediate is like, right, what we say in Hebrew, Parve, he's like not this in Nishtahira Nishtarain, he's not, not anything important. But that's exactly what the, the Tanya is going to say. That's not, not what he's trying to, that's not the book that he's writing for. He's writing a book for someone who's very categorized as something very important. So I had a friend, my friend Ami, he said maybe we should call the Benonim in-betweeners, right? They're sort of in-betweens. They're not, they're not the Tzadikim, right? And they're not the Reshaim. So the, from, from this word already, we see that Baratanya is writing a book for someone who's not a tzaddi. And that's very, that's, that's a, a very interesting uh, project to do. Because writing a book for Rashaim is a waste of time, right? For evil put people to write them a book of how to be good, it's, it's like a waste of time. Now, writing tzaddikim, for the, for, the, for the great people, writing them a book, what do they need a book for? Tell them how good they are? Right? That's, that's also a waste of time. Right? The project needs to be writing a book for those in-betweeners. And, and as we said, as I, as I spoke last week, and I, and I recall what Rav Steinsatz told us in Yeshiva, he said it was very important for him to tell most of us that we are all in-betweeners. Right? We're not, we're not tzaddikim. And knowing that is the opportunity to do something important in life. Um, so just on this word, and we'll go back to this, I want to, I want to read Rav Steinzot's commentary. It's going to be in Hebrew. Um, Can I just interrupt for one second? Is sure. that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, I just, that's the point. I, I feel like um, these two initial titles, um, they create a ton of space for the, for the reader. Because it's not it, it, the the it sounds like the author is not putting an agenda forth that the reader has to travel on a specific path. There's so much openness in both of the the title of like a gathering of sayings for the in betweeners. It like really invites the reader into create their experience. Like I feel like it. it it's a facilitating a partnership between the author and the readers just in those two ways right. of creating those titles. Right. Mm. And, and that's, that, that's what you want from a title of a book, right? To invite you, but not to like, right? Not to like put it on you when then you can't move, right? It's, yeah, thank you. Can I also just read one sentence from Rabbi Steinsaltz about the Benini that I think is so beautiful? He yeah, writes, please. the, Bainer, the Bainerni is no happy medium blending Sadiq and Rasha together. Rather, he is an individual in whom these two extremes coexist. Exactly. So that's, that's what I wanted to read from the commentary. You have the oh. English commentary? I have learning from Tanya. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So I'm going to read um, from the Hebrew version of that book, if that's okay. And we'll look at it together. And we're going to read those lines exactly, because what those lines say is that that this benoni is not is not something you need to apologize about, right? You don't have to be feeling bad about being the in betweener. On the contrary, you need to be happy that that's who you are, because most people are like that, and work with that. It's an invitation to be someone, as we as I said from what stands us last week, to be someone meaningful, not being someone great, but being someone meaningful. That's, that's the point. Um, so let's, let's read the commentary. And please, uh, Mamash, if anyone wants to say we're not a lot of too many people, so just open up your mic and comment whatever. It's, it, it adds a lot to the learning. Um, okay, so we're continuing. We're going into Lepstanza's commentary. Um, I'm going to translate everything to English. If any, any questions about the words, please. הנקרא בשם ספר של בינונים. שם זה, this name of the book, שניתן לספר על ידי המחבר, that the author gave it, 
אכן מבטא את ייחודו של הספר. It, get, it explains the, the, the special, the uniqueness of this book. העמדת uh, המושג של הבינוני הוא ללא ספק החידוש המכריע של הספר. Making the, the book a name, a, a book of a בינוני, is a חידוש. That's the, I would say, the uniqueness, the new thing that this book has to offer. There was no book before who was written for the in-betweeners. Right? All books in, in, in uh, Judea, Jewish spirituality were written for people in order for them to be the best and the greatest and, and, right, and beyond all norm. And this is the first attempt to write a book for the mass and telling them you're not going to be right, tzaddikim, you're going to be beinonim. It's, it's so much, you said, Ali, you said it's, it's, it gives so much freedom to a person, right? I know this as a teacher, right? By the way, with, as, a, as a teacher, I'm saying, we have psychologists here also, and we see it's, it, it frees so much a kid when you tell him, and this is, I, I'm going to say this with a little bit of, uh, how do you say, being careful. But when, I, when you tell a kid, listen, you have ADHD, and you're okay, it's great, now work with this, right? It's like such a matana to give a kid, right? It's very validating. What? It's a real, it's a real, it's very validating. It's validating and you're telling him everything's okay. Like nothing bad has happened. This is just who you are. And now, and at the same time, when you tell a kid, this is an issue you have, or this is what we find according to our knowledge with you, right? Then we tell a kid, now you have to start working. Now you have to start using all your other qualities and powers and using all what the world has to offer you, right, in order to bring your greatness out of you. Because that, um, I would say, that personality that you have has nothing to do with your quality being good or bad. It's just what you were born with. And that's, that's your case. That's your story in life. So telling a person, telling most of us we're benonim is a, is a big... I would say gift. A beinonik shele atzmo ino musag chadash. The um, Rav Steinzet said, Balatanya didn't make up this notion of beinoni. We find it in the Gemara already, right? And we know that the Rambam speaks about it. Right? We're coming up to Yom Kippur. The Rambam speaks about right the Rishayim going into the book of of evils and the Tzadikim been right written in in a in the book of, of righteous people. And then we have these Benonim who wait, who, right? On Rosh Hashanah, we don't know what to do with them, right? And then they're waiting until Yom Kippur. Think about it, that on Rosh Hashanah, most of the people, according to that Gemara, by the way, most of the people on Rosh Hashanah are sort of like in between. <laughs> Nothing happens to them on Rosh Hashanah because the Tzaddikim have their place where they're written in and the uh, Rishayim, you know, the evil people are, are put, placed in their spot. And then the mass are sort of like put, stayed in between. So he says that the Balatanya didn't make this um, category up. before when they speak about Benoni. And he speaks about now, what is the ideal of other books? The, the, the point of the other books of Musar, how do you say Musar? I would say the books of, uh, of behavior, teaching a, a Jew how to behave, right? What were they always telling? It was always the tzaddik who you need to be looking up to and striving to be. Um, right? It was always a sort of understanding that a person could be a tzaddik. Substantials used to tell us that he doesn't understand how people learn misilat yesharim. The, how do you say misilat yesharim in English? the book written by Reb 
the Ramchal. Right? It's a very, um, I guess, I would say popular book in Yeshivot. Mesilas Yesharim, that says it's called in English, I think it's The Path of the Righteous or something like that, it's called in English. And, and it's a book, and, and it's a book that, that the requirements of a person there are so high, right? But it's already telling you, you need to be the justice, you need to be the right person, you need to be that tzaddik. Over here, it's telling you, you need to be a benoni. What's important, he says, when I tell you Benoni, I'm giving up on this ideal personality, this ideal expectation. But at the same time, Instead of putting the tzaddik as an ideal, we put the benoni as a as a as a as a personality as as a goal that every person could achieve, needs to achieve, and can achieve. And this is what you read in English. I'm going to read it in Hebrew and translate. The Benoni gets here a special notion. A Benoni is not an in-betweener only. Someone who's not exactly a tzaddik and not exactly an evil person. He's not a compromise. Right? Being... Uh, a normal person, right, is not a compromise. And it's also not, I would say, a blend, right, of different, different, how do you say, tchunot, of different um, qualities of a person. That's not what a benoni is. A benoni is someone who is a quality of its own. Mahut it's, it's It's an essential quality of its own. I, I'm, I'm saying again and again a normal person, not because nor, because I feel like that's sort of what he's trying to say here. The benoni is is the normal person, right? Is 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 me and you, most of us. Um, I'm going I'm going to line 19, um, and this is what he and this is a beautiful way he says what the benoni needs to do. A benoni enenot sadik. Why is the Benoni not a tzaddik? Kevan she'eno yachol le'agia le'matzav kavua shel kedusha v'shlita b'yetzer hara. A Benoni, as opposed to a tzaddik, is someone who says he can't get a matzav kavua, which is, um, I would say, a permanent, a permanent um, way of life that you have no problems. That's the difference between the tzaddik and the benoni. A tzaddik is someone who's in a permanent way, always doing good. He doesn't even think about doing bad. He is, he is in such a, he has such, he's so connected to God and to the greatness of God and to the mitzvot and to the Torah that he never has to deal with the evil inclination of the yetzerara, right? But the benoni, is someone of a benoni who Adam dvekut, a person who can get to dvekut, the dvekut is being connected, is cleaving to God. The benoni is the one who's able to get there, but what's important to know is that it's not in, it's not a, a, a definite thing that he's in, right? He's not there all the time. I'll say he needs to fight for it. Or what Rav Steinsatz will say in a moment, I'm, I'm running to the next sentence, but you need to work for it hard, right? The tzaddik is someone who, who's, who has no problems in some way, right? He has different problems, right? We say, uh, in Hebrew, we say tzavot shel ashirim, problems of rich people, right? Uh, rich people have problems, but they're very different from, right, from... I would say that the, the poor person or the normal person, right? The rich person has to deal with, with, other, with the other level of problems financially. I'm just, that, that's just an example. Don't take me that word, right? 
but uh, that, that's not an ethical uh, statement. What I just said, uh, but but what what Rav Steinzitz is explaining here, the Tanya, so beautifully, I think, is is this point of something being kavua, something being permanent, and the permanent living of a normal person is that he's not permanent, that it's not stable. The instability of our lives is what categorizes us. And what, that's what actually categorizes what we need to do in the world, is we always have to balance between good and bad. The tzaddik is always balanced. And what he wants to say here, the benoni is also balanced. But he's balanced because he's balancing himself, not because he's made that way, but because he's, I would say, bringing himself there or right, doing the work to, to balance himself all the time. Shlomo, can I ask a question? Please, yeah. Um, so the use of the word benoni is very deliberate and different from saying ragil, right? There's a, there is a choice there because what you're describing is the human condition that most of us exist in, but he, right, there's so much light power in the words that we choose. And do you think that that choosing to say benoni instead of ragil is to actually make the state of normalcy be something that's special? Do you know what I'm asking? That's a good question. I never thought about the difference of the words. Why specifically benoni? Um, I think maybe I'm, I'm thinking together with you guys and, and please help me out. But I think benoni comes also from the word ben le ben, like in between. And I think that, that it's important for the Tanya, while he's telling you who you are, while he's telling you you're normal, to put you on the spectrum between the tzaddik and, and the rasha. Right? If I would tell you you're a normal person, there's no, there's no, no one on the sides, right? You're just like a normal person. When I'm telling you a benoni, I'm telling you, look to the right and see that there's tzaddikim, and look to the left and see that there's oshayim. Meaning you're always, part of balancing myself is, part of being my, the benoni, is always realizing that I'm in the middle and that, that there's, that there's also the, how do you say the ktsavot, the, 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 the extremes? The extremes. The extremes. So you're talking about being on the bell curve, right? That right. middle. But why is that important for the benoni always to remember that? Because right. the benoni could also fall into one of the other categories for a moment, right? If I'm always balancing myself, so I could by mistake be a rasha for, for a couple of minutes, for, right? For a couple of days or a couple of minutes, or right? And then I could also balance in myself and also, right, go to be an atzadik for, for a while. Part of, part of what Rav Steinsatz is explaining us so beautifully here is, is this essence of permanent and, and, right, and temporary is that I'm always, when I'm temporary, so, right, when I'm not balanced, I have to be in one of the sides, right? If I'm normal, I'm always normal, right? But if I'm a benoni and I'm losing balance, where am I falling to? I could, I could lose balance for the good. I could lose balance and be a tzadi. And then I could lose balance and be a rasha. Right? I don't know if it's always good, by the way. Where is it good to lose balance to? <laughs> I'm not sure it's always good to lose balance to be a tzadi because then it's very hard to balance, it, balance yourself back to be a benoni. I don't know. Did that answer a little bit what we were, what your question was? Yeah, but I yes, it does. But I also like for me, it goes one step even further, which is to like celebrate the concept of normalcy, right? It's actually giving it, oh, it's giving like a haskama in some way of like this is actually don't just think of yourself as normal. That doesn't right. It doesn't it doesn't elevate you to a certain status of your full expression of who you are. Like there's something mm -hmm. really amazing about giving it its own. It's legitimate. It makes it not real. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're, you're legitimate and this is something important and, and special. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That. Yes. Okay. 
So, so that's can the I just first. Add, can yeah, I just add one more thing to this picture here that I'm also rereading this for like the 10th time at the same right. time as Latanya. And, and what I'm getting so much is that it matters. I mean, you have to pay attention as a Bainini to both extremes and where you're heading because the cosmic significance of every choice, every word, every mitzvah, what it does in realms that we will never see is so cosmically important that it really gives the Bainini and our mindfulness of where we are so right. much meaning and purpose and significance. It's like, be it's beautiful and, uh -huh. and scary and responsible and all of it. Right. Yeah. And, and I want to add to what you're saying. And we spoke about about this last week, how Rav Steinzatz, I call it mission, right? And I said that we have to be careful not, not to categorize Rav Steinzatz too much because he was beyond categorizing. He, he was a free thinker and he didn't want to have like, but I think that one of his missions was to be realistic, realistic as much as possible. And that's calling you a Benoni, right? Telling you what realism is, where you are. And at the same time, also being that one who's I, I, I call it, who's demanding from you to break those boundaries, to break those boundaries of realism. Right? What someone once said here a couple of weeks ago that what what did Rav Steinzas teach him? They say that in Hebrew you have an expression, a shamayim and magvud. How do you say the heavens are the the skies are the limits, right? So he said that Rav Steinzitz taught him that the skies are not a limit, <laughs> that you could, you could actually go beyond. But you could only go beyond if you are so focused on who you are and what you are, right? And not living in a dream of what you're not. And, and always balancing yourself, always balancing and balancing is, is mamash, it's a life, lifelong, uh, lifelong mission. And it's not, it doesn't finish in, in a day or two or after a couple uh, weeks in, in yeshiva or once I, I was speaking to, to a guy who was learning in a Chabad yeshiva and he said that Chabad is an expression called bitul. I have, I'm nullified to the Rebbe or I'm nullified to God. So he said, I'm nullified. And then one of the elders looked at him and said, you're 18 years old. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you have nothing to nullify. <laughs> like, come, come back in 50 years and then, and then tell me you're in Bitu. Like, there's, right? It's not something you start. The, this, this is a progress. It's a lifetime progress. A Benoni is, is who you are. That means that you have to be working on this for your whole lifetime. Okay. Any, any other comments about this point or we should continue? Continue, okay. I see that there's a couple uh, people with us with uh, closed cameras, which is fine. If you guys want to open up and, uh, and, and share or comment, you're also welcome. Um, okay, so we spoke about this Shibui Mishkan, and I'll just say one more comment about this, and he says here, When he is connected to God in those moments, that it is, that it is his emet. That is real, that is real. Right? I would say that's authentic. And then the moment later when he falls, that's also authentic. That's one of the things that the Tanya deals with in which times that's asked, asked the question all the time. How do I know that what I'm doing is real, is authentic? Right? How do I know that I'm not in, uh, that I'm not, you know, kidding myself or, or telling myself stories, right? Or in Hebrew, we have an expression, chai beseret, I live in a movie, we say. <laughs> How do I know that, I'm, that what I'm doing is real, right? One of the things Rav once said is, how, how do I know that I'm not in a dream? 
right? So he says, if I fall in a dream and break my leg, I could wake up in the morning and, and continue to walk. <laughs> Nothing, no, if, if I could continue to walk, I know, I know that it was a dream, right? There's, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me afterwards. Something real affects me afterwards. But that could tell a person, okay, so if I'm a Benoni, right? And I, and I woke up this morning and I woke up early and I prepared myself for prayer and I, and I davened with a lot of kavana and I felt really good about it, right? And then a couple minutes later, I came home and, uh, and um, I don't know, ate, ate like a pig, right? And yelled at my wife, right? Or whatever I did. Does that mean that my prayer was not real? Right? Does that mean that an hour before what I did doesn't mean anything because now I'm acting right in in a unfocused way or in a in a in a low low sense of life? For the Benoni, it doesn't mean that because the Benoni is, is always trying to balance in himself. So when he when he's able to achieve something that's that's spiritual, that is real. It's not so simple because when you achieve something that's real, it needs to actually be authentic. And, and that's the question of life. And that's what the Tanya tries to teach us is how to be authentic in those moments of prayer that when you go later in the day and you do fall in whatever you fall, the prayer still stays authentic. And that's that we need to, that, that we need to learn and extend. How do you realize what's authentic and whatnot? But just for the category, the Benoni is that one who's always moving in the spectrum, right? And always moving in what's what's emit and not emit, what's real and not. Shlomo? Yeah. I, I have a question. Sure. Are we also trying to think about the falling as being something authentic? Is that a, is that a question that we address as well because if the Benoni's mission is to constantly be doing that balance does it mean that the falling down is equally relevant to their existence as the raising up do you know what i'm asking i know i know what you're asking and i'll try to answer it and and uh it's it's what one of those questions that we say uh I don't know if you're not allowed to ask them or you're not allowed to answer them. So, but you ask, so I'll answer. Uh, what, what you're saying is that if the Benoni is categorized as someone who's in movement, so the same way that it's real when he's doing something good, meaning that God wants him to be there, right? It's also meaningful and legitimate and maybe even godly to do something that's bad, right? Now we can't tell a person that saying because then we have no way to do good in the world. But the place we could say that to a person in Hasidut, and the Tani is very careful, he doesn't say it much, and Steinbeck was also very careful about this, but there's other schools in Hasidut who said it in a much more free way. They said, after you did something wrong, of course it was godly. Of course, there was a reason for you to fall in that, in that place. It's because you need to learn a lesson from that. It's because you need to rise from there to a higher place. It's because you had to explore something in life and Kedusha and find God in those low places. Of course, it's part of the, of the game of being a Benoni, right? It's a that diet. Is, yeah, it. And I'll say it even more. I'll say it even more radical. That is the quality of the Benoni, as opposed to the Tzaddik. That's what I'm asking. The Tzaddik has his qualities by being always on the top. But the Benoni has this quality of falling down and being able to be rising up from that place. And elevating that place, I'll use Kabbalistic terms, we say in Kabbalah, is to arise those sparks, those hidden sparks that are down in the bed. But I just said it much more freely than what Rav Steinsatz would say it as because he and, and, and the school of, the, of Chabad and Netanya were much more careful in those areas because they knew how dangerous it could be to tell that to their students, right? Because there's a very thin line 
of doing that cheshbon nefesh after I did something wrong and, and trying to understand, well, why did that happen to me? Why did God allow me to fall, right? There's a very thin line from that real cheshbon nefesh to legitimizing myself to do something wrong before I even did it and say, well, God allows me to do this, right? And that thin line, you have to be very careful with um, going to that area. So look, look at how amazing it is. We could, how long we could speak and learn. Uh, this is what a little bit I'm, uh, we're always learning the text, but I'm, uh, I also want to show what Rav Steins has taught us was also how to learn, right? Steins has taught us to go and, and read a title of a book and, 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 and specify every word of it and understand it. So we're going to continue in the book. Um, the next part of the title uh, says like this, Meyusad, the book is, Meyusad, I would say, um, established, Al Pasuk, right, the book is, is established on the motto of the book, is the Pasuk from our last Parashat Shavuot, as they wrote me that you, that you saw this and you showed your kids this week, this Pasuk, um, that everyone should actually know by heart. For it is very, very close to you. In Hebrew, the word me'od is very. And it's not used so much in the Torah, the word me'od. It's used very specifically, in very specific places. In your mouth, in your heart, to be done. Says Rav Stein says, "Pasuk ze ino amoto shel sefer kulo." This is the matter of the whole book. Who yoter mikishut asisma? It's not just a saying or something to make. You know, sometimes you write a pasuk in the beginning of the book to make it fancy. It's not about being fancy or beautiful. This pasuk really means something. Who amotiv a merkazi aover kechut ashani midat ledachun per leper. This is the motive that sort of goes through the whole book from page to page and from chapter to chapter. This pasuk comes to teach us two main aspects that the book wants to deal with. The first one, whatever is required from you, you're able to do. Nobody is requiring, you some, requiring from you to do something that is beyond your limit. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's going to come quick, but it means that you could do it. Every single person could do what is written in this book because it's not a book of tzaddikim. If it would be a book of tzaddikim, you would say there's specific, you know, you have to be accepted to read this book. You have to be accepted to this school of thought or of, of matter. But this, this is able la asoto, everyone could do it. Vashini and the second notion from this pasuk, Shekarov Elecha Davar Meod, the Ficha Vibab Khalasoto. It is very close to you. It's accessible. We're not demanding from you something that is beyond you and that is far from you. Right? The, going back to that example that I gave as a teacher, right? When you tell a, a, a child you have this or you have that or you like this or you like that, which is very scary to tell a kid to categorize him, right? But if, if we do do that or do it to ourselves, right? At the same time, we are, as teachers and mentors, required to tell that kid, you have all the ways in the world and I will give you, lay out for you, all those tools that you need in order to achieve your goals in life and your your ability to be such a great person but it needs to be known to you that you could do it he says this is a very optimistic book right it's very optimistic because i tell you you can do it you're able to do it the understanding that a person could do it, 
ולא רק לעשות את הדבר, אלא גם את הקרבה. Not only doing, but it's also close to you. Sometimes you, could, you tell a person you could do something, but when you tell him how far he needs to go to fetch it, it's like, <laughs> it's, right, it, it's not, it takes the whole, it, it takes all your koach away from it. So we're telling you it's close to you. A person neshanot at atzmo, a person could change himself b'thiv u'bilvavo, in his mouth and in his heart. What is closer to a person than your heart? Right? By the way, they say this, we're, um, we're, we're getting close to the days of tshuva, and they say that the tshuva doing to repent is the easiest mitzvah in the Torah, and yet the hardest mitzvah in the Torah. Why is that? Rav Kook explains this, by the way, in length in his book of Avot HaTshuva, because he says, it's so easy. I just think that I want to be a better person, and I did tshuva. What's easier than that? Right? If I just say, oh, I'm so sorry that I woke up late for, for davening this morning, um, which happens to me many times, I just thought that and I did tshuva. Right? What is more accessible than, than tshuva? But at the same time, to do a real, real inner work inside of me for it to really change my life, that, that's a lot of work. And that's the tshuva, the benoni is this person who always needs to do tshuva, that is always balancing between the things. But he knows that he's the, the place that, why does, how do we have koach to do things when we, know, when we know that we're able to, when we know that we can do it. Plomo? Yeah. Um, in that context, then is the, is the goal of the Benoni to um, enact change in his heart, or is the goal that he holds that balance and equilibrium through his life? I, th- I think it's, I think the more you, you are balanced, and not only balance, also sometimes being better than balance, then you're changing, right? It's, it, it's what we call sometimes, it, calls it, it becomes your second nature, and then your second nature actually becomes your first nature. The more we do the work, the more, um, the more we change, and the more the change be- becomes, becomes uh, permanent. But is the change to, is the change, mm. The balance, right, balance implies like a constant, right, that's the work part. I, I, I understand that concept, but what's, what is supposed to change for the Benoni? I think Are they that... moving to more towards the path of, like, where, what's the change place? I, I think the change is, is, is double. The change is double. First of all, the change is when, when it becomes more permanent in you. And that way, you're more and more, right? First of all, every achievement is a change, right? I'm giving you very simple examples because I'm, uh, how do you say, mitbayesh, uh, or uh, Embarrassed. embarrassed to give the deeper, yeah. right, uh, deeper examples, but uh, right, but those examples of every time uh, I don't eat that chocolate bar that I want to eat, right, that itself is an achievement. It's not only, it's not only the way to get to be in something better. That itself is great. Right. It's a. It's a means. That it's itself. An end in and of itself. Right. That itself changed me. And the second part is not only that it changed me, it affects the world. And that's part of what the Benoni needs to do. Right? Part of the Benoni's work is affecting his, the people around him, his environment. So the more Can the Benoni me? is balancing himself, first of all, by every step of the, of the way I'm achieving, and that on itself is worth it. Right? That's what I said before. Even if I daven now with kavana, that is worth it even if I yelled at my wife the hour later, which is, a, which is a terrible thing to do. Right, But that moment itself was an achievement. The next achievement is 
to also pray properly and also be nice to to my friends, right? And also that will be my next goal. But I'm constantly achieving. And when I'm doing that, I'm also constantly um, affecting my the world that I'm surrounded. That's, is the goal is, then is the goal then to be working towards towards being a tzaddik, which you're not because that's not what you're born into. But you want to be um, behaving more on the side of whatever we consider to be good. Is that, or is your whole purpose in life to constantly be in that dialectical tension between, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, it's, it's a little both. bit of a different, it's both, okay? It's both, I think, because the Tanya goes into Lent, and again, we're, we're speaking Mamash, things that need to be learned. The Tanya's 53 chapters, of Steinsatz wrote four books of commentary on those 53 chapters. So, um, so this is something that, that needs to be learned in, 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 in depth for a long time. But the Tanya says that the whole purpose of, of bringing our neshama to the world is is to make, a, to make God a, a place of dwelling in this world. So the point is for us to be in those, in those tensions, in those areas of, of, of work. It knows, uh, right? The Benoni is the one who has to do the dirty work, right? Because who else is going to do it? Rabbi that's once said in Yeshiva and told us, um, he said, I know that nobody over here wants to go into politics, but who's going to do it? <laughs> like, who's going to who's gonna do the dirty work, right? He says, like, he says like, I know, I know everyone here wants to be rabbis, okay. But if you're not going to, like, if nobody's going to go be, do politics, right? He didn't say it in those words, but I'll, I'll, sorry for being political, right? So we're going to have Bibi Netanyahu forever because, <laughs> like, nobody else is doing the work. So, um, sorry, I, I went off track. But the point is... Um, that that's part that's the point leslie i see you want to say something yeah i just have a quick question um i can't remember this the but since it just came from this past week's parsha and i re remember and was reading about it there what's the um what is what is he what's his position on what it is because there's a discrepancy between i think rashi and either and maybe rambam if i remember correctly somebody of what that is it's the it's like all the mitzvot or it's tshuva or what is it that's right. near and close and not uh, across the ocean and so so the pasuk is really interesting you have to go back to i think it's chapter 30 in, in Dvarim, um, and and really learn the whole chapter because that you could explain it on the mitzvah of tshuva and you could explain it on all the mitzvot right Ki mitzvah zot, it says this mitzvah and you could explain it on all the mitzvot of the Torah, which are close to you. And you could explain it on a specific mitzvah. And I think that what's brilliant about the Tanya is that he, he quotes it without specifying what it is, right? Which allows you, and going back to that comment of Ali, allows you to bring a, a very open opening, right? A very free opening to the book. And maybe, um, I'm saying this on my own, this is not something that I saw in Rabsteinzel's commentary, but maybe the Balatanya is saying, what is close to you? Whatever is your mission, whatever is your specific point, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to give you the path to do the work. I'm going to give you the path to open up that way for you. But you'll have to find exactly what is your specific, right? What is Leslie's specific mitzvah? That's your mitzvah, right? And, and my mitzvah. And everyone has his subjective point in, in the world. That's, that's part of being the Benoni, is that you are important for who you are. So he never said anything about that. Well, Shines else didn't comment on that. Um, not in those words that I said. Yeah. Um, so just take it and uh take no, it no, no, that was good actually i like my that. free comment uh 
I was wondering if you uh, remember if you said anything. Okay, thanks. thanks. I see it's getting a little late. Do you want to continue a couple more minutes or, or finish? What, who wants to, I don't know what your cough is. 10 more minutes to sort of wrap it up? Yeah. yeah okay. If someone needs to leave, feel free. Because I don't, um, I'm not uh, offended. We can always continue. Um, let's, and we're not going to read the text because I want to, I want to, the next point that Tatanya says is that right? And he wants to teach us how to do it. And he says, says this, this book is going to teach you the long and short way. Which, by the way, is another title of another book that Rav Steinsatz wrote. Um, the long and short way. What does he mean by that? So Rav Steinsatz refers to the Gemara in Masechet Eruvin where one of the rabbis said, well, once a child was smarter than me. Why? Because I had to, I was, on, I was traveling from my city to a different city and I saw a child and I asked him, how do I get to city X? And he said to me, well, you could go the short and long way or you could go the long and short way. So the rabbi says, well, I chose the short and long way, right? So he said, I started to go and how do you say it was like, it's short because on the map it's short, right? But going up and down all the mountains and valleys, right? It took him twice the amount of time of the long and short way, which was to bypass all the mountains, but getting there, but, but getting there on a smooth way. And the Balatanya puts this as the model because he says, I'm not going to give you the short way. I'm going to give you the long way but you're going to get there quicker because you're definitely going to get there. The short and long way is that way that is going to be shorter, but you're not for sure going to get there, or at least you're not going to get there, how do you say, in one piece, right? You're going you're gonna to break on the way so much that once you get to your destination, right, we, we used to have this uh, stupid joke as kids that a person swam and swam and swam and once she got to the beach he and he said Tava, he yeah. drowned <laughs> drowned it. but that's basically what happens you 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 go so quickly and you see this with young people or spiritual people right i don't want to say i don't want to offend anyone but i lived with batel when we got married we lived in Akhlaot. And in Yerushalayim, and you see all these amazing people who spiritually changed their whole lives and, and became so holy and so precious and so amazing. And now 10 years later, everyone is in a different uh, place and a different, not everyone, but many people sort of, right, woke up in the morning and sort of, I'll give you a great story, a great Rav Steinzitz story. A friend of mine from Australia said that Rav Steinzitz comes to Australia and he did a gathering. And one of the Balchuvas came, and he was a Labavitcher, one of the Balchuvas, came uh, to, to greet Rav Steinzitz with his children. And Rav Steinzitz sees him, and he sees, he sees the children calling the Balchuva father, saying Tati. They're calling him Tati. So Rav Steinzitz looks at the guy and he says, what did you call your father? He said, I called him Dad. So he said, well, how did you become a Tati? <laughs> what, what, like, what, who, what, what did you do to yourself? <laughs> now, this guy got really offended. He's like, I changed my whole life. I made myself kosher. I, made, I, I, I send my kids to a Hasidic education. And I just want them to be, you know, kosher Jews and call me Tati. And he's like laughing at me, mocking me for this. Okay, he, he left, uh, like many people would get offended from what stands up in cases like this. And he says, five years later, I have issues with my teenage child and I'm in therapy and I start crying. And the ther therapist looks at me and says, what's going on? And he says to him, don't you understand that I'm not a tati? <laughs> and the therapist is like, what are you talking about? But it, it took him so many years to realize that he's not who he is, right? That's the, going back to that Benoni, right? Why are you trying to be who you're not? 
do the work, make the change from where you are, that's the long and short way. Right? The short, it's very easy to change your clothes and to, and to, and to talk in a different language. Rav Steinsatz used to say that, you know, you could put a black hat also on a donkey, he's going to stay a donkey, right? It's that, you're not going to change a donkey by, by putting, by putting fillet on him, he's not going to change, right? It's not, that's the short and long way. That's, that's, or by being spiritual, that's what he speaks here about the commentary. How much people destroy themselves by trying to, quickly to be spiritual, awakening, right? And this, uh, I, I imagine that he's looking at, right, the holy hippies from the 70s or, right? And by the way, Rabstein had said about, about Rabstein Karabach, he says, someone once asked him, what do you think about him? So he said, Rabstein Karabach is a great elevator. And I was like, what do you mean? He says, he's going to take you up very high. Just don't forget to leave the elevator and like, you know, go on to the right, go on to the right, uh, how do you say, coma? Floor, right? And by the way, Rav Shlomo said that about himself also. And I know from close students to him, the close students of Rav Stein, that uh, my aunt Shelley knows, Rav David Zeller or people that we know, they were close students of of, of Reb Shlomo, but they afterwards went to the yeshivas without Reb Shlomo and did their and and studied on their own and did that work. They went on the ground level and did the work on themselves. It's not enough to have that spiritual awakening. That's the short way. And he says the long and short way is not being so spiritual. Actually, um, okay, I could go on and on this for many. Um, for a long, I'll just give one more example for what's the long and short way. Um, my, my wife is here, you can't see her, but in our Sheva Brachas, Rav Steinsatz came, and one of our friends uh, gave us a whole bracha, and the bracha was, you should love each other every moment of your life. And for Rav Steinsatz, saying that next to Rav Steinsatz is like, it's, it's dangerous. <laughs> so the Rav looked at him, and he said, Shkoyach. and then he looked at us and he said, love? He said, maybe in 50 years, you'll start liking each other. He said, maybe in 50 years. He said, love? What are you talking about? And, and he said, I'm very sorry to tell you this a week after you got married. And for me, I, I always felt like those like hard things, things that he used to say, were the were their most precious gifts that he gave us. Because now I have 50 years to live, right? And and not and I'm gonna fall in between many times, but I know that 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 that's the long and short way, right? That's that's the that's the way that allows you to fall. Allows you to fall. Um, and I just want to say last comment and then I'll love to hear just because Rosh Hashanah is in two or three days. I think that, that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur was mamash about this. And Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are actually, an, 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 they're also um, opportunities of those elevators that give you those moments of, of, of peak that allow a normal person to rise, but then from there continue working. Um, I don't want to keep you guys you, up later. There's a lot to say also about Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur about this point. Does anyone want to comment or say something to conclude? Um, I just want to give up, give out, give, what are you guys saying, Yeshiva, to give? <laughs> anyway, something that I learned from Chaya, the Holy Chaya Lester this morning that I loved about this. And she said the letters of the shofar are the same letters in the word Pesha to improve. So that call is to let's get busy here. Right. Yeah. To, to, I, I just love that little thing. I think she's okay. great. But. Thank you. So <laughs> listening to the shofar is that moment of, of, of being better and changing ourselves. And mm -hmm. thank you. So thanks so much for joining. This was great.
Thank you, Shlomo. And <laughs> thank, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank Whoever you. wants next week at the same time, Tuesday, uh, nine o'clock, we'll we'll have the last session of this uh, of this uh, meeting and have a shana tova to everyone and so what the vote. Good to see you. Shana tova. wherever you are and we'll have a we'll be in touch. Bye bye. Bye. I'll just um, stop the recording. Um, I didn't leave meeting in this council.